This week on Big Red's Cooking, a raspberry meringue pie. Hi, and welcome back to Big Red's Cooking. I'm Big Red. So a couple of Tuesdays back, I did a whole video around a no-fail pie crust, and I actually did a blind bake in that video and suggested that I might do something with that pie crust. Well, I did. You know, the magic of TV sort of jumping forward here a little while. But I mentioned about a raspberry meringue pie, so that's what I'm making today. So you know what, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to my favorite place, my workbench, and we'll pick it up over there and I'll talk a little bit more about that pie. All right, so to get started, first thing I wanna do is make some raspberry juice. So really what this is, this is a modification of my lemon meringue pie. And typically with a lemon meringue pie, you're using about a half cup of lemon juice and about a half cup of water. You can blend it together with other ingredients. I've got some frozen raspberries here. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add about a cup of water in on top of this. And then I'm gonna put this on the stove and let this simmer out a little while. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna allow all my raspberries to break down. And then I'm gonna pass it through a sieve and we'll collect our raspberry juice. Now, if we need to top it up at that point, we will but I have a feeling I'll have more than enough here. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this on for a nice low simmer. And I'll have full details again, obviously, of the amounts and things like that online. So while that comes to a simmer, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gather up the remainder of our ingredients so that we're good to go. So we'll check back in on this now again in a few moments. Okay, so our raspberry juice and simmer it away and we get some nice raspberry juice. I've got all my other ingredients. So let's go ahead and strain this off here now and then we'll know if we know, need anything else. <clears throat> so I've got my nice fine mesh sieve here and I'm just gonna run this down through. And try not splash too much raspberry juice all over myself. I, I really like to use a rubber spatula so that I can get as much of the pulp down through as possible. This really nice sieve is going to hold on to all the seeds for me, so I know I'm going to have a really nice smooth juice. But I definitely want to try and get a bit of that pulp down through, and that's just going to add a little bit more body and a little bit more flavor. And I'll probably even save you know, this stuff at the top. I know I've got more juice than I'm going to need there. So what I'll do is I'll add it all back together and probably make a raspberry sauce or something for myself. There we go. So doesn't that look nice and pretty? How deep that color is. Okay, so we're going to need one cup of this. So I'm just gonna pour off one cup. And there we go. And this I'll just put to the side for now. Now I've got the remainder of my ingredients here. Now, you know, again, if you've watched my videos before, you know I love to use weight. I just find weight far more accurate, much easier to measure. When I do do the write-up for this, though, I will also be including volume measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and add 340 grams and just good old fashioned granulated sugar into my pot. And then I'm gonna put in 65 grams of cornstarch. And then about a half teaspoon, or sorry, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm not gonna measure this, I'm just gonna shake in a little salt if I get a little extra. That's gonna be okay. And what I'm gonna wanna do now is I'm gonna take this and give this a really good whisk. I'm trying to make sure everything is sort of fully incorporated together here. And I want to make sure that that sugar and that cornstarch is really well mixed together. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to add in my juice. Now I want to do this carefully because normally we would do this with cold water. It's still a little bit warm, so I'm actually going to be whisking as I pour this in. A 
because I want to try and make sure I don't get a, any lumps going on here. Now if that sugar and that cornstarch is properly mixed together, it should help to ensure that we don't really get any lump with our cornstarch. We want to make sure that that's all really well mixed together. And then get right down into the corner, make sure you don't have any lumps sitting in there. You get that a really good whisk. Next I'm going to add in, I've got 30 grams of butter here. I'm just going to help cool it down a little bit. Because I need to be adding my egg yolks in shortly. And if my butter is not melting, I know then that this is cool enough for my egg yolks to go in without having to worry about cooking my egg yolks. So give that a bit of a stir around. And that butter is not really melting, which is good to see. So the next thing we're going to add in here now is our egg yolks. And I've got four egg yolks here. Now, what I've actually done as well is that I've got my egg whites. So when I separated out my egg yolks and my egg whites, I actually did it into a large bowl because that's going to allow me to make my meringue afterwards. So, of course, you know, we can't have a... This is a take on a lemon meringue pie. I'm doing a raspberry meringue pie. Kind of need meringue. So you want to be smart about it. If you're going to separate your egg whites, separate them right into the large bowl that you're going to need. And then it's one less dish to wash afterwards. So there's my egg yolks. Give that a really good whisk around. And then our last thing we need is some boiling water. So I gotta reach for my kettle, I'll be right back. All right, so, you know, our scale, great way of even measuring water nice and accurately. So I need 375 milliliters. So I know I can weigh this to 375 grams and it's going to give me exactly what I need. Perfect. Alright, so what we want to do now is slowly whisk in this hot water. If we add it too fast, it can actually cause our eggs to cook and we don't want that. There we go. So now we're just going to bring this to a simmer on our stove here. So at this point, now that everything is whisked together properly, I prefer to stir with a wooden spoon. I find if you're stirring with a whisk, you can end up with something a little bit airy. We don't really want any air in our curd. We want just a nice, thick, creamy curd here. So what we got to do is bring this to a boil, reduce down that heat, let it simmer for a minute or until it's the proper thickness. And again, what you really want to be doing is pretty much keeping this moving the whole time because otherwise I find what can happen is that you get really big, thick pockets at the bottom and you don't get an, a nice, even, smooth curd. And I like to make sure I get right in along the sides and in the corners of my pot. So you can see it's starting to thicken up here now. It's starting to change color on me. It's getting a deeper red color. Turn that heat down a little bit. I don't want this to burn. 
Once it starts to thicken, it'll get thick pretty quick. You can see how it's changed lot of color. It's gone from that sort of pale pink to a really nice deep red type color. And it's really important to keep stirring at this point. Make sure you get right into the corners of your pot. All right, so that's done. So what I'm gonna do now is actually I'm gonna turn on my broiler because what I'm gonna do, well, next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put this right into our pie shell here now. You know, get a little extra for me for afterwards, which is nice. So I'm just going to put this to the side for a few minutes. And while that cools down a little bit, we're going to go ahead and we'll get our meringue made here now. So to make our meringues, I've got the four egg whites from those eggs I separated out earlier. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to whisk these until we get to what we refer to as the soft peak stage. Now if we add our sugar in too soon, we just will not get a good meringue. We really need to bring it up to that soft peak stage first, and then we slowly add our sugar in. So I'll go ahead and get, and again, you know, we want lots of surface area if we can, and ideally what we want are nice room temperature egg whites, which is why I tend to just leave these out while I'm doing everything else. Okay, so we can see we're getting peaks at this point, but they're sort of tipping over. So we're at that nice soft peak stage. So what we can do now is we're going to slowly add in our egg whites. Now we want to be careful, we don't want to over mix our egg whites and our meringue. We'll end up with something really, really dry. Okay, so what we're looking for, we want something that's going to be nice and shiny. When we pull it up, we get that peak that holds its nice peak. And we know we're good to go here now. All right, so. We've got our pie here. I've got my oven on. I need to adjust my rack. Nope. Pretty good spot. I'm just going to go ahead and Put this right on top of my pie. I'm gonna just go ahead and spread this around. Now one thing you wanna do, or make every effort to do, is to make sure your meringue is actually touching right down to your crust itself. If you do that, it's more likely to stay in place. If you don't actually bring it right down to the crust itself, it has a tendency to shrink back afterwards. But the crust almost seems to act like an anchor and hold it in place. So I always like to make sure I bring it right down so I'm not saying any of my pie at all, or any of my curd, I mean, that that meringue goes right down and touches right down to that crust. Okay, so then what I want to like to do is just come along and give my pie pan just a little wipe with a damp, clean cloth, just to clean up those edges a little bit. We're going to go ahead and pop this in our oven. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's the risk. I'm not paying too close attention. My paw is a little dark on the top, but that's okay. I'll be happy with that. So you can see there really wasn't too much to making this pie. You know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have used those lemon pie fillings you can buy at the store. And really there's not much more into it than what to do on that to the way I just made it versus those lemon pie fillings from the store. So this is a great recipe that works with a lot of different types of fruits. I know one of my co-workers he teaches in the baking program, he was mentioning to me that he loves to do a pineapple curd pie. Right, so you could really use almost any juice. You know, and just stick around with those volumes. Think about, you know, so I had a cup of juice there. So with our lemon juice, we're gonna cut our lemon juice down in half. You know, so it's gonna be half lemon juice and half water. It's just too tart otherwise. I had that one cup of raspberry juice, which was nice and tart, but not too crazy. And gave me a really nice, beautiful raspberry flavor in the end. You know, you could do this with almost any fruit juice whatsoever. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you're gonna give this a shot. I do hope you're going to come back and really I hope you're going to hit that subscribe button. You know, if you haven't watched my video around the pie crust yet, I'll have a link to that. And I hope I'm going to see you back here soon. But more importantly, I hope you're having a great day and some really great food. Bye for now.